you can succeed, part one. Now, it's simply wonderful to know that success is yours by right and equally amazed to discover that you are born to succeed and to win. Your father is a super success and he wants you to be successful like him. There's no one who, in his true sense, will want his children to become poor and beggarly if he's comfortable. He wants the children to be greater than him. If God, the almighty God, is super successful, then to be successful, you have to do things like him. And I pray that you will never settle for mediocrity. Amen. Enough of you crawling on the floors of mediocrity. Content by being the tales of ascending to the position that God has set for you. Success is not just getting results. But getting results in succession. Success is not just getting what? But getting results in succession. It is making satisfactory progress. Making satisfactory what? Expressing a change of levels in every facet of life. In our various endeavors and pursuits, you keep changing levels. That's what we mean by success. Now, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, which is the key verse for today's teaching, shall we read this verse of scripture? This is the key verse for today's teaching. One, two, go. Are, are you there, sir? Shall we read together? One to go. How many things? It is some things God said. God said, I can do all things, not some things. If God says you can, it's an abuse to redemption to ever use the statement, I cannot. I can do how many things? To say you cannot, then you are lying. God says you can. And then somebody says, I cannot. That means you remain in the can. To say I cannot makes you remain where? In the can. You say yeah, you can, it's your business. You say you cannot, but God says you can. If God says so, then I should believe the word of God. God says you can do how many things? He says you can do some things. No, brother, you didn't say you can do something. Impossibility exists in the minds of mediocres. If thou canst believe, how many things? Now, listen, everywhere in the Bible, this is something. If you can believe, all things are possible. I can do all things. God is saying, not some things. There's nothing you cannot do. To say, I can't. I mean, you are making a mockery of redemption. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and verse 7, it says, Wherefore I put the remembrance that I stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Shall we read verse 7 together? For God hath not given me the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a what? Sound mind. Your mind is supposed to be sound. Everything to make you great is inside of you already. Know that. He said, This gift is in you. It's not going to be in you, it's already in you. Let me tell you this. You can succeed if you make up your mind. To succeed, the mind has a major role to play in your life. You know why God said, without your mind, I can do nothing. Feel more one for thing. So your mind has a major role to play if man must be successful. So I hear He says, as he thinketh in his heart, so what? As the man's mind is, so he is. It takes positive and possibility thoughts to command a standing success in life. Let me say this to you. You can't think impossibilities and become successful. And you can't think impossibilities and expect possibilities. You can't think failure and expect to be successful. You can't think obstacles and have miracles. You can't think like a grasshopper and expect to live like an eagle. As a man thinketh, so is he. Oftentimes, many, many people allow thoughts of impossibilities to becloud their minds. You hear them say something like, can anyone make it in this country? 
If you have to make it in this country, you must be corrupt. I would told you that. Can, I, can, can anyone really, really make it today in today's life? If you have to make it in this life, you have to be corrupt. Whoever told you that nonsense that you have to be corrupt to make it? Where did you see it in the Bible? You know, if you have to make it, you have to know who is who. Where did you see it? After you have known God, who is who again do you need to know? Do you know if, if you don't know anybody, can't make it? Where did you read it from? Such thoughts have beclouded believers' minds and then they keep them down. You'll be free today. Yeah. You can't do it to you know you're a woman. You're a woman, you can't do it. I'm telling you, you can't do it to you're a woman. Don't do like men. Ah. When it comes to success, men and women are equal. I've often said it, it's only in marriage that God said the man should be the head for administrative purposes. For what? Don't misunderstand the Bible. He never said that the woman is less than the man. Nowhere in the Bible. Male and female created he them. They, when it comes to success, two of you are equal. Two of you are what? There's no woman, feminine brain and male brain. The brain is the same brain. So the woman can be super successful as a man. Even the woman say, don't do that all. Don't do that all. You're a woman. Don't you know you're a woman? Ah. So, the statements keep people down. In this country, in this country, I said, you go outside the country. This, this part of the world, you can't make it all. You will have to travel out to wash plate. <laughs> Stop carrying obstacle thoughts. They will affect miracles and success in your life. I see you free today. Yeah. The truth is, you can't carry thoughts of obstacles, failure, and mediocrity, and express success. The two don't go together. You're either thinking possibilities, or you're thinking impossibility. No neutral ground. There's no possibility, possibility thought. You are either thinking it is possible, or the next thought is what? You're either thinking failure, or you're thinking what? You're either thinking sickness, or you're thinking what? There's no sickness healing thought. Every thought is either the two, no neutral thought. Either a man is thinking failure or success. Is that thinking possibilities or what? There's no impossibility, possibility thought. If no, there's no neutral thought. Your mind is either going one way. Check your mind at every time. It's going one whichever way. The pendulum is shifting. Either you're thinking failure or you're thinking what? Success. Either you're thinking possibilities or you're thinking. Let me show you something in 2 Kings chapter 7, 1 to 2. Under a strong economic circumstance, it, it was so hard in Israel, things were tough just the way it is tough in the world today. To the entire world, the things are very tough. And then there was this economic hardship in the land. And you see how impossibility thoughts has a way of affecting people and many are like that in the church of Jesus today. This man was a strong economic advisor to the president of that time. And he had this impossibility mindset, which many have today. And it, it contradicted. Even when God was speaking, he didn't believe it. Let's read together one and two. You get it clear. Shall we read together? One, two, go. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith what? Thus saith this is what God is saying, this is a, a man of God speaking, this is what God is saying, then there was no Bible. Tomorrow, what shall we go, tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for what? And two measures of barley for what? In the gate of now look at verse 2, the men with some impossibility to us, as some of us also do today. Shall we do together? Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned, Answer the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, my distance be. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see thee with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Where did the man's problem come from? His mind. He said, Elisha, I am an economic advisor. And from what I've read, it is not possible what you're saying. Now, for times, when you read for that, it happened, and the man died. They trample him to death. Every time you doubt, you cause pains to God. God hates to be doubted. God loves to be trusted. When God speaks and you doubt him, you will never get blessed. He said that it undoubted is 
It's not, not of faith. And it's a sin. When you doubt God, you have committed sin. Is somebody get what God said here? Yeah. Romans 14 23. When you doubt God, you commit what? He said that doubt it is damned. And if you eat, because he eat not of faith. For what service is not of faith is sin. So when he said, I don't have faith, you're already committing what? Sin. Anytime you doubt God, God said, Where you be the head? He said, How can I be the head? I beg, forget this thing, Joe. What are you talking about me being the head? I'm, I'm, I, I'm talking about the economy not working. You're saying I'm going to be the head in this time. Once you do doubt, you have stopped the flow of the supernatural. You are saying, I can, It cannot happen. How can I, does this man know what I'm doing? I'm talking about having a small provision store and saying that God said to him that you are being a millionaire. When they say God said, it's not someone said it before you. The word of God is the God said. If they say God said, it's the word of God. And the strongest prophecy is the word of God. It's not somebody vibrating before you. When God's word says something, believe it. Don't say, oh my God. Oh my God. Many of us are victims of our negative thoughts. We want to. Even if you don't say it openly, you say it in your secret. You can't walk around. It doesn't go to market. So it's much making bring, 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 bring. You talk chat, 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 chat. You know, it's on the pulpit. It doesn't know what will happen in the world. I'm talking about my PhD I have in economics. I'm in the first class. First class, have you solved your problems? Before you solve other people's problem. This man lost out of abundance because of impossibility. What? Toss. I saw one scripture that changed me not too long. I've read it over and over, but I use it in every area. Healing up. That, the day I saw it, the realm came. That was the day cancer was healed on the spot. I have read that scripture over and over, over and over, but strange light jumped from the pages of the Bible. Luke 18 to the 7. And I saw light. But he said, and he said, this, this which are impossible with men are possible. It's a different way. If you don't understand it, you miss it with Mark 10 to the 7. Peter looking up to them and said, with men it's impossible, with God. This one is talking about you cooperating with God. You partnering with God. They are not the same way. They were saying, anywhere man stop, that's where I will prove myself. The two are not the same. This other one in Luke is saying, the thing that men have written off, I will show myself mighty. That is anything men have said, this cannot be done. That's why you see me act. Any situation men have given up, I take up. That's what the other one is saying. That it means that anything that men have said cannot happen, and you believe the word of God, God is committed to making it happen. God is not speaking. Look, listen. If God says a thing and that it doesn't exist, and you believe him, he will make it to exist. Just for saying, there were no fishes in the water. But the moment Jesus spoke, cast your net, he created the fishes. If God says to you, you see an empty space now like this, he says, God says, go and sit down there. He don't ask you, go. He will create chair to appear. When God speaks, he is done. So you don't ask him. If God says, my son, go there, sit down. And you say, I'm going now. He will, if there's no seat, he will make a chair to come out. So we, we, have, we have heard and stayed around the world too long. So we say, no, nothing now that this man is talking. I know the Bible says so, but. Is this but that will keep you inside the but? Take off all the human jargons and believe this truth. You can do now, let's look at the man Abraham, for instance. Romans 4, 19 to 21. Romans 4, 19 to 21. Tell about thoughts are powerful. They either make you or they break you. They never leave you neutral. Tell your, tell your neighbor, they never leave you neutral. What are you thinking? Romans 4, 19 to 21. You all know the story of Abraham that he had no child. That's true. <laughs> and be not weak in faith. He considered, where do you consider things from? From your mind. Where do you consider things from? From your mind. He considered not his own body now dead. You know, when you read King James, you'll be... It was saying that at that point, Abraham was impotent. He had nothing like a man to perform. 
He was completely dead as a man. But God told him you have a child. A man who cannot perform, how is he going to have a child? He didn't say, you know, God, you know I'm dead, I'm weak. I can't sleep with my wife. No. He said, God, because you said it, I don't know how you would do it, but I know I have a child. Do you understand what God is saying here? He didn't question God, though. God, you look at my body now. I'm not performing, no. Why are you saying that I'll have Isaac? My wife, she has passed menopause, papa pause, everything pause. <laughs> he didn't look at that. He said, God, what you said, you have the power to perform. He said, so stop considering all these dragons you listen to on radio. You know, you know, the Naira is this to now a dollar, a Turkey, the lira has gone down, um, this one has gone. Hey, he said, market, I used to go to Turkey, so no way again. Okay, ten. Oh, no. Consider not those things. You have considered to a point that they need to consider you yourself. He said, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither the dead of his womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded, that will persuade me, being fully convinced. That what God had promised, he was able also to perform. Shout, and God will perform that will concerns you. Yeah. Shall they believe in amen? Yeah. Say, I know it. I, I believe it. I believe and that settles it. That's why God said, looking on to Abraham and saying that I bear you. Isaiah 51 verse 2. He said, look unto Abraham your father. And say that I bear you. For I called him alone and bless him and increase him. Look unto them. Do like he did. Abraham didn't look at his age. He closed his mind to negative thoughts. He closed his mind to negative factors. He only considered the abilities of God. What God had promised he was able to do what? To perform. Let me say this. No one can maintain a continuous flow of the miraculous. A continuous flow of success, a continuous flow of the supernatural without a renewed mind in line with the word of God. Renew your mind and believe you can. Tell them about renew your mind. Renew your mind. Say, I will renew my mind. I renew my mind. And I believe I can. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul said, Let this mind be in you. Philippians 2 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this kind of mind be in you. Christ never considered anything, everything he knew God was able to. So he said, I can do all things as, as I and my father are one. Let me say this to you, Philippians 4 8. Everybody falls to four categories of pictures. Everybody. The picture of themselves, the picture of how others think of them, the picture of the devil to them, and the picture of God to them. Everybody, you fall into those four. When you talk, you fall to one. Either the picture you have of yourself, you look at me now. Look at me. For our family, nobody. That's the picture you have about yourself. Do you hear what that man said? Did it? Yeah. It just abused me now. The picture of that man to you. <laughs> if you know how the devil has dealt us, the picture of the devil to you. But I tell you, I'm more than a conqueror. The picture of God to you. <laughs> Many people cannot do anything. If they are praying, yet yeah, they cannot do it because the picture they have is already false. They say, not the devil. There will be no deliverance ministry without the wrong picture. What are you going for deliverance if you don't have a wrong picture? What makes you believe that you are under a curse? It's a wrong picture. <laughs> it's a class that is dimly you. But you say, ah, if, if you know the curse is falling in our family, it's a picture of... <laughs> you have about yourself. You believe you have a curse. He said, no man like me. They say, whoa. <laughs> it's a picture you have you about yours. <laughs> no girl likes me. Every girl who sees me say no. Already you have a wrong picture. 
So the guests already there. They tell you no because the picture you have about yourself is so faulty. You say, African, I talk to. You don't look at me. Oh, look up. It's like, where this one go? You already have a wrong of yourself. I've not seen people say, but the blessed are war. You can succeed, part two. Success is actually making satisfactory progress. It means experiencing a change of levels in our various pursuits. Success is becoming a plus on daily basis. Faith does not mean you don't know there's a problem. No, that's, that's not it. No. Paul said, Satan hindered us, so he knew. <laughs> but in spite of that, I'm going to succeed. That devil can't stop me. Do you understand what faith is? Faith is that, yes, it is there, but I'm going to move through that and conquer. That's what it is. I won't allow that challenge to stop me with the word of God. So I hear. Yeah, this recognizing a problem is not doubt. No, 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 don't mistake it. It is taking God's word to overcome the problem that is faith. Let me, let me give you an answer. There's no way anybody will pretend and say that there's no hardship in the land. There's hardship. There's what? But I am not going to bother myself about the hardship. I'm going to take God's word to overcome the hardship. Do you understand now? I can't say there's no hardship. There's hardship, but it's not my portion. Because I have the word of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. How can I succeed in spite of the challenges? How can I succeed? In spite of what? In spite of all the problems in the world, how can I succeed? How can one succeed in spite of all the problems and challenges? How? And I succeed this one of all the problems. Number one, confront that challenge. Do what? What you don't confront, you can't conquer. What you don't want in life, don't watch it. Confront it. Take God's word. Take what? And confront that problem and challenge. In Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 2, he said, take with you words and turn to the Lord, the A-path. So I take God's word and I turn to God and say, because of this, this thing should go. Do you understand what I'm going to say here? When you know what is written, what is happening won't panic you. If I know I can do something, I'll go for the word of God. For such the scriptures. In that scripture you have life. Is that true? Number two. How can I succeed in spite of challenges and problems? Possess a winning mentality and not that of a loser. Possess what? And not that of a, a loser. Let me tell you, when I go further, you know what I'm talking about. Losers measure in their problems. Winners talk about the possibilities. When you see a loser, everything he will talk about is what? The problems. When you want to see a winner, he talks about the possibilities. Losers talk about their obstacles. Winners Talk about the opportunities and miracles available. Winners talk about their health. Losers talk about the disease. If you see this cancer. Since they told me cancer. The winner said, no, by stripes. I'm healed. The loser keeps talking about the sickness, how big it is. The winner keeps talking about the power of God's word to heal him in the midst of that sickness. Losers talk about what the devil has done. Oh, the devil destroyed my family. Oh, the devil attacked our family. 
why we now talk about what God can do and his victories. God gave us victory over the devil. I learned something. I was talking to my mentor. He escaped crash last year. They were going to Israel and the plane failed. It was a supernatural delivery. While talking, he said, God delivered us. God gave us victory. But a loser will say, ah, if you see, plane would have crashed. That's how losers talk. Plane, if you see the devil came like this. That's a loser's mentality. Yes, the challenge came, but the winner's mentality, he tells you what God did. A loser tells you what the devil did. That's how you know a loser. A loser talks about the devil. That's why we have 20 deliverance ministries. They talk so much about the devil. They make the people have loser's mentality. Winners talk about what God can do and what God has done. <laughs> Losers talk like victims. Winners talk like victors. Winners have sonship mentality. Losers have slaveship mentality. See the way life is treating me. See the way I am now. Hey! I'm born again, but see the way I'm looking. <laughs> Stop exaggerating the power of the devil. Start emphasizing the power of God. There's a fire about the greatness of God. Let the world know your God is a big God. He can heal, he can deliver. He can rescue. Stop talking about what the devil can do. You will never hear the devil on my lips on the altar. Oh, Satan is the reason why your family is not progressing. No, I know God will see you through. That's what you tell the people. Don't tell them, no, the reason why your family is not prospering is because the devil has held you. Love so call for seven days deliverance. And people are held captive because of ignorance. When there was slave trade, they didn't force them all. When he had slave trade, no white man came to Africa to enslave anybody. They only tell the fathers, I give you a pack of cigarettes. And then the king would give them men. They didn't say, no. They, they just gave them cigarettes, cigarettes. To the king. And the king would not give hard, strong men back to the white man. So this time, even churches enslave people with teachings. They tell them how the devil is. So the man goes there and they keep him like a, in bondage. So if you tell them God can deliver, he say, no. No, we are doing 40 days deliverance. Then midnight, every midnight, we're getting up naked, we're carrying broom. I mean, he, he has now enslaved him with slavery. So the man is held in captivity. You tell him Jesus delivers. He said, no, hmm, I'll get up in the midnight with broom to make sure the devils don't come near. He is held captive in his mind. He's not a victim. He's not a what? A victim. I command your freedom right now. <laughs> Testify of the greatness of God. Number three. How can I succeed in the midst of the challenges? Get the right picture from scriptures about yourself. 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 The Bible is a book of pictures. It gives you a picture of God, a picture of the devil, and God's picture of you. I come again. The Bible gives you the picture of who? God. The picture of the devil and God's picture of who you are. Now, people fall into four categories of pictures. Everybody falls into four categories of pictures. The first picture is the picture 
picture you have about yourself. The picture you have what? That's opinion of yourself. The picture you have of yourself. The second picture is what people think of you. That's people's opinion about you. Have you ever stayed like this? You look at yourself and say, mm. Look at me now. Look at can, hey, people. Is, people say I'm ugly. I'm a little ugly. <laughs> that is. Have you not seen people ask? They say, "Look, they, they, they. people say I'm ugly. I want to. You, I want your own opinion. Please advise me, my friend. Am I might a little ugly. Already by saying that, you have already accepted the opinion of people because you can't ask that question if you know your picture. You already accepted the opinion. Otherwise, why will you ask somebody to? <laughs> You are created the image of God, but you don't know the people of yourself. So you say, come on, am I like that? They say, I'm so ugly. Am I really ugly? You are ugly for saying that already you're ugly. You've accepted the opinion of others. Then the devil's picture. What? What the devil thinks of you? What the devil thinks of the devil's opinion of you? And then what God thinks of you? God's opinion. There are four categories. Your opinion of yourself, other people's, uh, the devil's, and God's opinion of you. You fall into this photograph. I pray today, you will only take what God says about you. The dead spies had a negative opinion of themselves. That's why they had a different uh, negative one. They saw themselves as what? Grass uppers. Now, based on what they saw themselves, they said, so also are we in the sight of others. So other people do saw them like that. You see the opinion? So the reason why people are having different opinion about you is the opinion you have about yourself. If they say poor man, it's because your opinion, you, will, you, even, you may not say it, but the way you even talk, the way you even look, you display poverty. Poverty is not interesting. Can I tell you something? I posted this something today. Poverty is not interesting. Poverty is not the what? This suit I wore it intentionally today to teach. I did on purpose. All my suits are expensive. This suit is the normal suit everybody wears. Did you know now? I wore it today to teach. This suit is not more than 40,000 naira. I've never worn this kind of suit. My suits are 3,000, 4,000, 6,000 dollars. So I told them, give me this suit in touch. And they gave me as a gift. I purposely wore it. This is the suit everybody wears on the street. Now, did you know? The opinion I have myself makes me carry myself with a cheap suit. But I intentionally wore it today to teach. Did you know? No, he said this is one of the most expensive suits of Papa. <laughs> you have poor opinion, you only carry yourself. When there are people who will never come out until they dress well. The day you see them out is the day they feel they are well dressed. They already have a poor opinion of themselves. It's not of God. It's not of God. These people saw themselves as what? When you hear a man talk, a woman talk, it will reveal whether he or she is a winner or a loser. Just allow somebody to talk, you know where he falls. It's as from the abundance of his heart, the man speaking. Matthew 12, 34b. You need to hear some people talk. I'm good for nothing. Good for nothing. Everybody hates me. How can everybody hate you? If everybody hates you, will you move on the street? Everybody hates me. If everybody hates you, you will never move because even the boat you entry, they will throw you out. But you have concluded everybody hates me. Look at me, I'm so broke. If you are broke, you will see pieces now. Brother, change your way of thinking. So I hear. 
How can I succeed? This is our challenge is number four. Renew your mind with the word of God. Renew your what? Mind with the word of God. Renew your mind with the word of God. Romans 12 verse 2. Don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't be conformed. Renew your mind with the word of God. And no matter what is happening, change your way of thinking. Renew your mind with the word of God. Agree with what God says. Anything not contrary to the word of God, trash it. Put it in the trash. For we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 So we may have an excellent, brilliant mind. Now in Christ. So stop Thinking you cannot solve problem. Stop thinking you cannot solve that problem. Don't magnify that problem. Believe you can solve it. Believe you can handle it because you can do all. how many things? All things. That's the way to overcome. I can do some things. All things. All things. Want you to stop talking problems. Stop talking what? The more you talk problems, the more you magnify it. The more you talk problems, the more you magnify problems. The more you talk about the answers, the more the problem looks small. This is how life is. Anything you talk about, you magnify. If you are poor and you keep talking poverty, poverty will get bigger. The more you talk about poverty, it will get bigger. The more you talk about poverty, it will get bigger. The more you talk about poverty, it will get bigger. But the more you talk about God's provision, poverty will begin to be small. The more you talk about God's provision, poverty will begin to be small. And you get to a point you will never see poverty around you. It's anything you keep speaking about is what you magnify. That's if you go to churches where they keep talking about the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. They magnify it to a point. Everybody there you see is a class of people. You will never see some set of people. You see a kind of people. Funny, funny kind of people. Because are, that is what they talk about. And when you keep talking about God, you see even if it comes small, he begins to grow. He grows, he grows, he grows, he grows. Because they want to talk about what you magnify. You don't be talking about the devil and devil and devil. Where did you just talk about the devil? He existed but never talked about him. When Jesus was on earth, Satan existed. He never talked about him. He never who? There was nowhere, Jesus said, if not for the devil. If not for the devil. Every time you hear Jesus, you he will talk about his father. He talk about the father. So the people were hearing about the father. They were not hearing about the devil. He was existing. Who tempted him? Devil. He existed. But he didn't make sure anything about him. Everything now you see, they say, hmm, that's my uncle. Eh? Is the reason why we are not prospering. You're already talking about the devil. I know with God's power, all those forces will bow. You are magnifying God. Nothing can stop me from making progress. That my uncle is irrelevant. I'm going to advance. That man can stop me from getting married. He's still smart to stop me. You're magnifying God. Make your choice. Number five. I say build your faith. Build your what? Build your faith. Greater is he that is in you than the devil in the world. Is that true? 1 John 4 4. Build your faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. Is that true? Yes, Romans 10, verse 17. So constantly build your faith. Because the more your faith grows, the more you overcome. Romans 10, verse 17, that's what it says. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20 and verse 32, it says, Brethren, now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to do what? Build you up and to give inheritance among all them that are sanctified. The word of God has the ability and power to build you up. Let me say this to you, brothers and sisters. Stop looking at where you failed yesterday, but at your possibilities tomorrow. Because grasshoppers' mentality paralyzes faith. 
Stop complaining. Start conquering. Live above the challenges. The ten spies talked about the giants. Caleb and Joshua talked about the size of the graves. Where is your focus? The giants or the graves? Stop talking about the economy. How harsh it is. Start talking about prosperity. How you can prosper. 